<laughs> hey, <laughs> Jesus, hang on. Hey everybody, welcome back to Koi Pond Lifestyle. So what have we got on today? It's Christmas Eve. Where's your heart? Good point. <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas Eve. Let's see what we got on today. All right, filter floss. Got to get some filter floss changed. Um, it's, it's this filter floss in, in my um, Jack Matin Bay is lasting maybe two or three weeks. I can't remember the last time I did this on the last video, but it's lasting about two or three weeks at the moment. It's definitely doing its job, so we'll get that changed. So as you can see the old filter floss, bless it. Definitely doing its job. Fantastic bit of stuff. And like I said, this sort of shows you how much waste your pond is still creating, even though I'm not feeding the fish. You know, this is just bits and pieces coming out of the pond. But it's a really good polisher as well, but I'll keep going on about filter glass until the cows come home. So anyway, let's get this uh, new bit in. Right, new filter flush is in. Are we ready for the Bing Crosby thing? In a bit, not yet. Anyway, so okay, let's uh, let's have a look at some results for the water testing. Hey, I tell you what, why don't I do like a Bing Crosby White Christmas sing along at the end? Isn't the White Christmas supposed to be copyrighted? Uh, I don't know. Bing won't mind, will he? Oh, I don't think you could sing anyway. <gasps> you cheeky bleeder. Thank you very much. Anyways, and don't think about doing this thing off if I do get it done at the end. I need one of them jumpers as well. Anyways, let's have a look at some water results. Okay, so, um, some water results. As we said, I know I'm going to kind of repeat myself a little bit, but from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., no air running. From 7 p.m. overnight, 12 hours, air running into the filter system. So, a lot of people were saying, yeah, but isn't that going to affect your ammonia levels? because you've got no air going in, so is your, is your beneficial bacteria going to be able to um, process the ammonia? Because I think the fish are still giving off ammonia, I proved that because we had some results. But anyways, so I've done a few days and taken some samples just to show you. So this is earlier on when I was doing it, so this is a 7am, and this is with the 7pm. So same test, kind of a little bit of difference, and here's another one, 7am. 7 p.m. and so on and so forth until tonight or this morning should I say I did two I did an ammonia test and I did a nitrite test because I was seeing if that slight bit of ammonia that was in there because it looks like to me at the moment is that on either 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. the ammonia is, is, a, is a slight result of ammonia and in the next one there's no ammonia so it's looking, I was wondering if when that ammonia is there, is it turning it into nitrite? But if you look at some of the results from today, this is the morning one, no nitrite. And this is the evening one, 7 p.m., no ammonia, no, no nitrite, should I say. So there's none on either, but this is the 7 a.m., slight touch. So even with the air running overnight, we're getting ammonia showing the following morning, as soon as I turn the air off, oops. And then this is, the, this is afterwards. So there's no real change to, to having your air off for 12 hours of the day. So when I go back to my cost saving video that I will post up there if you're interested, I'm concluding now I can afford to not A, not have my UV on. I can afford not to have my skimmer on because there's nothing to skim really, I've got the, the lid on it, so it doesn't really matter. And I can also afford to have my air pump off for 12 hours of the day and not affect the fish 
with any ammonia that the fish are producing because they're not eating at the moment. So they're not producing any ammonia, but they are producing an amount, if that makes sense. They are still producing it, but not as if you were feeding them. So the, the, the video that somebody said to me, have a look at the Adam bloke, uh, when, he, when his tank went down and he found his ammonia levels started rising, don't forget he feeds his fish 365 days of the year because he's all heated. Everything's heated with him. He, he doesn't allow a lot of his stuff to go cold. Uh, especially on the indoors, uh, on the indoor heating, uh, and he's got some massive pools and stuff. So he's always feeding. So obviously his ammonia levels will be a lot more, a lot higher if all of a sudden his air goes off because his, his fish are producing a lot more ammonia. Where mine at the moment aren't. If this was the summer period, I'd have all my air flat out 24/7, just running and running because you, the oxygen saturation levels in warmer water is a lot lower. The, you don't hold as much oxygen in warmer water as you do in colder water. So. So I've concluded, yeah, that I can run my pond through the winter on 80 watts or just over, and that's the pump. And, I'm, and I've spoke to my supplier actually about the pump, and I'm going to get one of those variable ones I can turn up and turn down. So I might even to be able to make a saving again, because don't forget, all these, all these power and all, all the gas and electricity is going to start costing us an arm and a leg. You know, I really feel for people that sort of heat their ponds at the moment, you know, Good luck with that. I, I mean, comment below, you know, if you heat your pond and you, your bills have started coming in, for, I think it's next April, April 2022, that a lot of the bills start going up um, and a lot of people's electricity and, and gas starts going up. So that's going to be really interesting to see how they manage their bills. And their, well, not their bills, because that's nothing to do with me with their bills. I'm just wondering, wondering about how they, they manage their heating bills for their pond. So whether, I don't know, whether they, if I was doing it, I'd just turn my, my heater down and keep it at a, a constant low temperature, personally. You know, I wouldn't, for, I wouldn't do sort of 12 to, 12 to 18, 15 degrees just so I can feed. I'd, I'd just lower it so it's, it's consistent. If that makes sense, again, comment below if you think something different. But, you know, I'd, I'd put it at sort of, I don't know, I think there's, there's a certain temperature you hold it at where you don't have as many issues. It's either 8 or 10 degrees, I'm not sure. But I'd hold it really low so that I wasn't using as much energy to heat the pond. So uh, anyway, so yeah, so heat, so I've done all the tests and, and that's fine. Um, I might have to buy myself another, another test because I've, I've used a lot of ammonia because I've been doing it every day over the last few days since the last video. So I'm quite happy with this, um, with the water test. So let's crack on with something else. So yeah, can you believe it? 12 months and we've gone already and it's nearly Christmas. But um, so from everybody at Koi Pond Lifestyle to everybody out there who's watching this program, as we speak. I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year for 2021 and hopefully 2022 is a good year. All these problems we have out in the world they all sort themselves out. We don't have any parasites in 2022. <laughs> Chance to be a fine thing. Anyway let's crack on with something else. Okay it's almost time for the Bing Crosby sing along. Do you mean I can't sing? Of course I can sing. Anyway Thanks very much for watching. If you've uh, liked the video, please click the like, subscribe, ding the bell for notifications, share to all your friends. Here we go. <laughs> bum, 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 ah. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. 